أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله واتقوا الله إن الله سميع عليم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي ولا تجهروا له بالقول كجهر بعضكم لبعض أن تحبط أعمالكم أن تحبط أعمالكم وأنتم لا تشعرون إن الذين يغضون أصواتهم عند رسول الله أولئك الذين امتحن الله أولئك الذين امتحن الله قلوبهم للتقوى لهم مغفرة وأجر عظيم إن الذين ينادونك من وراء الحجرات أكثرهم لا يعقلون ولو أنهم صبروا حتى تخرج إليهم لكان خيرا لهم والله غفور رحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إن جاءكم فاسق بنبأ فتبينوا فتبينوا أن تصيبوا قوما بجهالة فتصبحوا على ما فعلتم نادمين واعلموا أن فيكم رسول الله لو يطيعكم في كثير من الأمر لعنتم ولكن الله حبب إليكم الإيمان وزينه في قلوبكم وكره إليكم الكفر والفسوق والعصيان أولئك هم الراشدون فضلا من الله ونعمة والله عليم حكيم صدق الله العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah most gracious most merciful الحمد لله وكفى وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عباده الذين اصطفى وعلى آله وأصحابه الطيبين الطاهرين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعن الأئمة الأربعة رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين وعنا معهم بمنك وإحسانك وعن ذريتنا إلى يوم القيامة all praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Blessings and salutations that are complete and spotless upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The best of creation, without doubt. Blessings as well upon all his companions who were stars and who were also from amongst the best of creation. Blessings and salutations upon the four illustrious imams and blessings upon all the ulama of this ummah who have passed before us and upon the ulama in our midst and upon all of us and upon our offspring to come until the day of qiyamah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all upliftment and keep us steadfast on deen and use us and our offspring to serve this deen until the day of qiyamah Ameen 
honored ulama, beloved brothers and sisters and dearest friends. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us for a purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has creatures. لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. He has creatures who do not disobey him in anything. Whatever he commands them, they do. They do not have the ability to disobey. Who are those creatures? The malaika. They are the angels. The angels do not have the ability to disobey. The same applies when it comes to those creatures on earth that do not have souls. They do not have the ability to disobey. The skies, the moon, the earth, the trees, the grass, they are totally subservient and we know that. وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِن لَّا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ All the creatures of Allah, whether they have life or not, we should understand the creatures of Allah, they all engage in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one way or another, and they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we might not understand. The birds, the trees, the ocean, the water that you hear, the, the waves that beat against one another, we think it's just a sound, it soothes us. That is the sound of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The clouds, they, not one drop is released unless Allah has ordered it. Nothing. The sun will never appear unless Allah has commanded it to appear. It is so obedient that today we can calculate calendars for years to tell you that at 6.23 the sun will set. Imagine. What if we were like that? Someone would say this man enters at 6.23 and 30 seconds. Our technology is far higher, isn't it? Our brains are far higher. But nay, we choose to disobey. The moon is such that people will calculate that at this point it shall be born and this is the first visible time, roughly. They will calculate it for you. People go out into space. They don't make a mistake of a nanosecond. Not a millisecond, a nanosecond. They don't make a mistake. They know. Because of the obedience of the creatures of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. When a tree is in your path, you bring an expert. The expert will tell you what you need to drop it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Yet the trees themselves are prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah has creatures, and at the head of those creatures, the angels, لا يعصون الله ما أمره. They do not transgress at all. So if Allah wanted worshippers alone, who only engage in worship, He has them. He doesn't need us. There are angels who engage in tawaf day in, day out around the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are angels who are engaged in istighfar, not for themselves, for us. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Subhanallah. Allah is making mention that the angels... They declare the greatness of Allah, they praise Allah and they are seeking forgiveness for us on earth here. Because they can see that we are engaged in transgression day in, day out. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, have mercy, forgive these people, forgive those on earth, Ya Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, had he had to punish us because of our deeds, he would have left nothing on the earth today. We don't deserve this oxygen that we are breathing. Sometimes a huge truck happens to be driving next to us and the exhaust is near the window and you know how it feels as soon as he revs to take off and all the fumes come into your window and you happen to close your window and some people will swear but they don't realize that they do not even deserve carbon monoxide. Not even that. Even that air is too pure for us to breathe. Yet we are breathing air for free and we don't realize why we are in the dunya. We don't even realize what is the dunya. I spoke a few days ago about the recognition of Allah. Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We don't even know. We have no clue to be honest with you. Who created me? How am I created? Why was I created? Where am I now? Where am I going? What is going to happen to me in a few days? What is going to be happen to, happening to me in a few minutes? I don't know. What is happening to me before I drop my hands from here? I don't know. May Allah grant us understanding. 
It is all in Allah's control. We have a small role to play, but we haven't recognized the greatness of the Creator. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are other creatures who transgress. And they only transgress. Out of what? Out of pride. Qala ana khayrun minhu. Iblis and his army. What do they do? They only transgress. Out of what? They know Allah. They recognize Allah. They understand Allah. But they are proud and arrogant. The ulama, muhaddithin, mufassirin and all the experts of this ummah's learning have all said that pride leads you to kufr. You are arrogant, you are proud, you think I have meh, meh, meh. It sounds like a goat, doesn't it? May Allah grant us understanding. I am the one. If you say I, I, that is how Iblis was led astray. What did he say? I, I am better. Ana, ana khayrum minhu. I am better than him. I can't. I can't lower myself. Today we have that problem in every community, society, in the Muslim ummah at large. Everyone feels he's better than the other. The minute you have a feeling I'm better than him, you are lower. You must remember that. Whether it is spiritually or in whatever way. Even if we are reading five salah, someone happens to be a drunkard outside. We do not condone the drinking. We know drinking is a kabira. But you must understand there might be one small deed that he might enter Jannah for. And our pride and our backbiting of him, our salah that we made in the first self, the reward of it might go to the same person. There is a possibility. We can't become proud. Never. If we become proud and we feel, oh, this man is engaged in a sin, so therefore... Yes, if he's engaged in the sin, you're allowed to talk about the sin and generalize and try and help him in person and help your, yourselves and your progeny and your ummah to stay away from that sin. But you can't think you are better than him. No. The ulama have explained that that is a major sin. So we should realize that we need to know that pride leads us to Jahannam. Pride leads us to Jahannam. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell Iblis? Whoever follows you from amongst them, from amongst men, I will fill Jahannam with you and with them. All of you. Follow him in what? In that pride. May Allah protect us. We need to humble ourselves down. We are not better than anyone else. People are equal like the, comb, like the teeth of a comb. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. And in fact, those who know Allah, those who recognize Allah, they will tell you we are worse than everyone else. La ilaha illallah. They will tell you we are worse than others. We all know how much we are swimming in. Each one knows his or her, or her own private sins that he or she is committing. May Allah forgive us all. May Allah grant us istiqamah. So I spoke about recognition of Allah. Today I want to speak about recognition of the dunya. If we know Allah, we will get closeness to Allah. If we know the dunya, we will understand it is a doka. It is a, it is a cheat. It is a deception. But if we don't realize what is the dunya, we will never understand what it is. We will dive deeper into it. And it doesn't end anyway. Like someone diving into a pool, he doesn't realize that it is only a few centimeters. What's going to happen? He'll crack his skull. He can't see beyond the blue water to notice that even the bottom is also blue. It deceives him. He sees his reflection thinking it's deep. He dives in. What happens? He cracks his skull. That is the dunya. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in between these two creatures. Those that only worship and those that only transgress. We are in the middle. We will worship and if ever we make a mistake out of human nature and if ever we fall into sin, we will turn, we will engage into an act of worship that neither the malaika do nor the shaitan does. What is that act of worship? Tawbah. Tawbah, turning to Allah. The malaika, they make tawbah for us. They don't need tawbah because they don't engage in any sin. And the shaitan, if they engaged in tawbah, they would be better than us. Shaitan doesn't engage in tawbah. Shaitan told Allah, look, give me respite, grant me time, I'm going to show you these people are bad. And I will show you they will worship me and others, but they won't worship you. That's what we are doing today. We are becoming Abdus Shaitan, may Allah save us. Wallahi, there are two categories in the dunya. Abdul Rahman, Abdul Shaitan. We are one of the two. We are either worshippers of Allah, or we are either worshippers of the shayateen. It's a fact of life. But the winner is the one who can realize where he is and consolidate that which is good and eradicate that which is bad. That is the winner. So what is this dunya? What is the dunya? 
Before I get into what is the dunya, let me inform you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was he not protected from sin by Allah? No sin. Protected by Allah. Ma'asum, the highest of creatures. Sallallahu ala Muhammad. What did he do? Every day he used to engage in istighfar. Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. How many times? One narration says 70. One narration says more than 70. And one narration says up to 100 times a day. Did he need it? Did he need it? Wallahi, he did not need it. He did not need it and he did it so we could follow his sunnah. So if you are following the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, myself and yourselves, we will also do that. So now we have tasbihs. What happens to a tasbih? We have a marathon. You know John Benson or Ben Johnson, I don't know his name. When I was young, he used to run very fast. And he cheated. He had some steroids and he was banned. So what we do, we follow Ben Johnson and John Benson. And stuff, 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 nine minutes, nine seconds, hundred gone. And then we're happy. Hey, I did a hundred. Sunnah tariqah fulfilled. Is that what is wanted? Is that what is required? Are we not playing a game? They were running 100 meter sprint. We're running 100 meter tasbih. That's not what is required. When we pull one, we say, Astaghfirullah. We need to sit and think, what have I said? And what does Allah promise that his response will be? That is the winner. I have said, Ya Allah, I am a criminal. I committed sin, Ya Allah. I seek your forgiveness. I will not repeat that sin, Ya Allah. Forgive me, I plead with you. That is what you are saying. What is the statement? Astaghfirullah. As simple as that, the meaning is what I just told you. Now you sit, you think, what did I say? And then what does Allah say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever seeks forgiveness, I forgive him. Man taba taba Allahu alayhi. We know the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna Allah yaqbilu tawbat al-abdi ma lam yugharghir. Whoever seeks forgiveness, I forgive him, Allah says. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he will forgive everyone who seeks correct forgiveness until the point of gharghara, which is almost death. Inna Allah ta'ala yabsutu yadahu bil-layli liyatuba musi'u al-nahar. Wa yabsutu yadahu bil-nahar liyatuba musi'u al-layli hatta tadlu'a al-shamsu min maghribiha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues stretching the arm of mercy every day to forgive those who have committed sin by night. And the same happens by night to forgive those who have committed sin by day. So now when we say, Astaghfirullah, stop. Allah will tell you and Allah will respond, my worshiper, I have forgiven you. I love you. You are a banda of mine. You are as pure as the day you were born. One Astaghfirullah. One astaghfirullah. Now when you repeat it 10 times thinking, 70 times thinking what you've said and holding on and feeling the answer. What is ihsan? أن تعبد الله كأنك تراه فإن لم تكن تراه فإنه يراك. Ihsan is to worship Allah as though you are watching him. If you cannot perceive that, then you should understand he is watching you. You must be able to feel his existence. When you talk to him, he responds. Allah says, I answer the call of every caller who calls out to me. Does he answer positively or negatively? He answers positive, positively. Because he does not have a negative quality. Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. So when we say Astaghfirullah, we must know what has happened. If you are true, you will get up from the masjid like a wali min awliya illahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. You will get up from this istighfar like a, like a saint. Then when you come out, you must remember, consolidate what you've achieved. You've achieved something great. You need to stay away from sin. Don't for one minute think you are better than others. There was a man, I have to tell you this, on a lighter note. He sat in the masjid, he did his istighfar, and he sat and after a while he felt he was very big buzru, very big buzru. He went out, he began to despise everyone. So he would come back to the masjid and sit on his own, until one day they decided to play a prank on this man. To decided to play a prank on this man. So people would come to him and say, you are a very big buzru. He would say, yes. And every day his head would swell. Yes. These people, they are all heading towards Jahannam. They don't know. This is, I want to show you what is the result of kibr and pride and the feeling that I am better than others. So one day they turned off the lights they came to him in the darkness of the masjid. He was all alone. And they began 
to use voices, echoing voices. You know the masajid with tall, with high ceilings, echoing voice. They called him by his name. And his name echoed immediately. He felt, what's happening? So they were playing a prank. May Allah save us. We are not allowed to play pranks like this. They said, I am Jibreel. He said, Jibreel, please come. Imagine, he's thinking that now he's getting nubuat. Why? Because he feels he's higher than others. They told him, we want to take you to Jannah. We want to take you on Mi'raj. We have a Burak waiting outside. So, what they did is they blindfolded this man. He was very happy. Imagine, he is thinking that he is getting some revelation from the heaven. They blindfolded him. And this is a true story. And they took him out. Slowly but surely they led him. They had a donkey waiting outside the other way around. They made him sit facing the back. They told him this is a burak, hold tight. Then they released the donkey and they went away. So he held, he was blindfolded, he went, he went. He thought the journey from the dunya to the akhirah is very long. He carried on till the morning when the sun rose. People saw him in the marketplace behind the donkey. Allahu Akbar. Facing the other direction. They told him, what is happening? He said, keep quiet, I'm getting nubuwat. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. May Allah save us. They began to beat him. And they really beat him so badly, they hospitalized him. They told him, what nubuwat are you talking about? Nubuwat finished a long time ago. If only you knew. Why did I raise this on a lighter note? Just to let you know, we should never become proud of our deeds. Never. Ask Allah to accept our deeds. May Allah accept the little deeds that we engage in. You know, one of the signs of Qiyamah, يُوشِكُ أَن تَدْخُلَ مَسْجِدَ جَمَاعَةٍ فَلَا تَرَى فِيهِ رَجُلًا خَاشِعًا You will walk into a masjid, jama'a, meaning, it has many meanings, a massive masjid with lots of people, or a masjid where jama'at is being led and read at that time, not one person will concentrate, will be concentrating. Everyone is in his own, can I use the word, dwang. Everyone is in his own dwal, some say. In his own world. People are thinking of this and that. And we know of so many stories the ulama have given us of how a person has four shops and he knows there is a mistake because he only did hisab of three. We know that. So he says, Molana, you've only read three rakats. They say, how you know? Because I only did hisab of three shops. Every day I do a hisab of four. One every rakat. So we come as soon as Allahu Akbar. We don't even know what is happening. Our mind is somewhere else. How do we know that this salah is accepted? We ask Allah to excuse us for our weakness. We ask Allah to grant us concentration in salah. Those who cannot concentrate, increase your a'udhu billahi min ash shaytanir rajim. And I'm not telling it to you just as a ceremony. Think of the meaning, what, what you are saying. Oh Allah, I seek your protection from shaytan, the accursed and condemned. He is coming. Waswasa. Read kul a'udhu bi rabbin nas. Read kul a'udhu bi rabbil falak. Read these surahs more. Not only as a ceremony, but understand what you are reading. And Allah will help you. May Allah help us all. We all have this problem to a certain degree. Some more and some less. So yesterday I was speaking about coming into the masjid when you will leave your shoes out there. We are leaving that which sticks to the ground. We are leaving that which is on the ground. That which connects us to the dunya. We are leaving it at the door. When we come in, we should be coming in without any connection to the dunya. We are walking in us. We are connected straight to the masjid, musalla, house of Allah. We are meant to be concentrating in our salah. But what happens? We come in, we bring our cell phones in our pockets. We can't even leave it at home. And if we bring it, it's switched on. The house of Allah. What is this? It's a sign of qiyamah. It's a sign of qiyamah. And I'm not saying it for any reason. I know every masjid I've ever been to, people's mobile phones ring. At times it is human error. But how can that human error repeat itself 50 times in the week? How? A person will tell you, I broke the glass one time. Then they say, I broke the glass second time. Then they say, I broke the glass. Then they say, I broke the glass. And every day they say, you broke the glass. You tell them, don't touch a glass from now on. Move. <laughs> Common sense. There is a problem. So this mobile phone is a very big fitna. I don't want to talk about a mobile phone. Because we know it's a fitna. And I don't even want to draw your attention to the fitna that it has in how many homes it has broken up to today. Just the SMSing. Voda also makes it free. So many SMSs free. Because that means so many houses will break for free. That's what is happening. I don't want to draw your attention to that. I want to draw your attention to something else. In the masjid it comes and songs of Michael Jackson and Madonna and so on are played in the house of Allah. 
Can there be a bigger sign than Qiyamah from amongst the minor signs than that? May Allah save us. This is what we mean. Yushiku an tadkhula masjida jama'atin fala tara fihi rajulan khashi'a. Even the Mulwiji who leads his salah, Allahu Akbar, and he's now concentrating next thing, ting, 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 at the back. Even he says, oh no man, in his salah. So even the one who wants to concentrate, somehow someone prohibits him from concentration. May Allah save us. So what is this dunya? What is the dunya? Allah explains this dunya in verses of the Quran in many places. And I have chosen a few verses today. Allah says, I'lamu. That means, let it be known to you. You should know. You should learn. Al-ilm is knowledge. You should learn. You should know. Let it be known to you. Annama al-hayatu dunya la'ibu wa lahu. You should know that this dunya is play and amusement. What is play, what is amusement, and what is the difference between the two? Laib is simple playing. You know you've got those toys, you connect the puzzles, you, you, you bring Lego, you bring the two together, that is playing, you are playing. You kick a ball from here to there, you are playing. And lahu is amusement, slightly more sophisticated playing. You've got computer games with batteries inside, you've got remote control cars. When a child grows up, what does he start with, play or amusement? He starts with play. Later on, there is amusement in the play. It becomes a little bit more sophisticated. This is the difference between lahun, i'lamu annama al-hayatu dunya la'ibun wa lahun. First it is la'ib. First it is just plays, toys. Any toy that is colorful you bring to a child who is young, a rattle that has a few beans inside will also make a little child quiet. We just rattle it a little bit. But when the child is six years old, can you say, can you shake that rattle? They laugh at you. They won't. They say, Daddy, I need the toy. I need that toy. Which toy? The one with the battery. That remote control car. Some of us are 40 years old. We still play with remote control cars. Why? Because we still have a feeling for what we used to do when we were young. If it soothes you, it's not haram. Believe me. But I don't want to give your secrets away. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So, we have la'ibun is play. Then we have amusement. The slightly more complicated play. La'ibun wa lahun. Then what happens to the child? Imagine the order of the Qur'an is the precise order of what happens to us. A child is born, it starts, Allah is describing it for me and for you. What happens when a child is born? Picture it. Firstly you start, you make the child play, you're happy, you as a parent, you are happy. Oh, I have a child, mashallah. You throw a party, you call the people in and everyone is so excited, happy. We forget sometimes to make dua for the child. And sometimes as a ceremony, we tell people, make dua for my son. But you yourself, your deeds are so far that even if people are making dua, you are blocking that dua by hitting it with every sin that you're committing, hitting the dua away against your own child. That's what we are doing. So people will make dua for your child. You also make dua for your child. But you must remember, your deeds spiritually will brush off onto the child. I want to give you an example. If a lady is smoking while she is pregnant, what do the doctors say? It will affect the child. That is physical effect. Upon the child. All the doctors will tell you that. If a lady is on drugs, or even if she is sad, emotional, stress will affect the child. So do you think the spirituality doesn't affect the child? If a woman is sinful, her thoughts are dirty, while she is pregnant, do you think it's not going to affect the child? You are foolish if you think that. May Allah save us. The same applies even after birth. You are in the home, your father is smoking all day. It's going to affect you. The doctors nowadays say the child is more prone to sickness than the man who's smoking himself. Because you are in the company's worse, apparently. So, which means you are committing sin day and night and you have your children playing games. You think it's not going to brush off on them. Then we say, make dua for my son. He must become Hafiz and Qari and Mulwi and Mufti and Alim. And he must enter Jannah. Yes, what are, what are you doing about yourself? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Let us not drown in the dunya. We are proud. We cause problems. These problems with our family members, with our children, with our fathers, with our brothers, with our parents, with our in-laws. These problems, wallahi, they seep through generations. They will split generations for centuries to come. Why must we die going down as a person who split the family? We rather die going down as a person who brought the family together. 
Why must we die as a person who was jealous of the imam, jealous of someone who drove a Mercedes and someone who drove a BMW and so on? Why? We'd rather die saying we were happy for everyone. We made dua for everyone's barakah. Ya Allah, grant him a BMW. The day he gets it, he won't know it was through your dua that he got it. That is how we are supposed to be. He has one. Ya Allah, grant him ten. But give him happiness and grant him jannah. And remember, if you make dua for someone else's jannah, and that dua is accepted, most probably you will be in jannah before that person because they only entered it through your dua. How can you not be there? May Allah grant us understanding. So, let me move further. Then Allah speaks of this amusement that I said, slightly more complicated toys. As you grow, how old are you? You are now 10, 11, 12. 10, 11, 12. Then you become mature. You grow up. When you grow up, if someone gives you those small rattles, you are not interested. Even if someone gives you those minor pullback action cars, you laugh at it. I'm 13, you're giving me a pullback action car. Who do you think I am? I need to drive a real car. 13 children don't have driver's licenses. They want to test their daddy's cars out. We know that. Why? Now let me explain to you. When I went to Durban, I was once told that sometimes in the schools our children are such, when the father goes to pick up the daughter with a bucky, she says, no daddy, go back, fetch the Mercedes and come, I'm waiting here. How do you want me to jump in a bucky when everyone else is watching? Wallahi, this is the condition of our children. Let's be honest. This is what is happening. Why? Because we have not trained the child. And ourselves also, we are living a life possibly and probably of double standards. In the masjid, we are Muslimin. As soon as we enter, as soon as we leave, sorry, we are somebody else. Our hearts already, we have hatred. And in fact, that hatred has seeped into the masajid today. May Allah protect us. This is the house of whom? Me or you? Is it my house or your house? It's the house of Allah. So people complain about the light in whose house? Allah's house. Who has used you? Shaitan used you to whinge about the window. No one else. Shaitan used you to complain about the carpet and the mic and about this and that. If you thought for a moment that this is the most sacred house in Tongat and I am complaining about it, Allahu Akbar, not me. Let someone else do it, not me. Even if people come as is the norm in most communities, the people who do it, those are pawns. And I don't mean with an R, with a W. May Allah save us. They were just, in Gujarati we say, charaud by someone. They were actually keyed by someone, pinned by somebody. The people, the masters of the ring, the ring masters of the circus are the, some people who are sitting back, relaxing, watching the action. They pull back or they turn the Mickey Mouse and Mickey Mouse goes out to whinge and complain. A lot of communities, this is what is destroying the ummah. Not realizing poor Mickey Mouse is complaining about the house of Allah. How? If we thought that, we would say, look, bye, try someone else, not me. I'm not going to whinge about the house of Allah. You are creating enmity with Allah. Yes, if you've got a solid point you want to raise, raise it with due respect, bearing in mind this is this most sacred house. I will die in history. My name will go down. This person split the community into two, starting from the masjid. Why do I want my name to go down in that way? Why? How? Where do I want to hear Jannah or Jahannam, if that is my action? This person came into the masjid and made life difficult for the ulama. They have not understood anything. They have not understood who the ulama are. So Allah continues to say, Wazinatun. After la'ibun wa lahun, He says, Wazinatun. What is zina? Beautification. Get to 13, you are now suddenly aware of yourself. You look in the mirror a little bit more often. It's right, it's a fact. Allah, my creator and yours is describing the phases we go through. He's telling you, this is the dunya, my worshippers. This is the dunya, my worshippers. Understand it so that you know what it is. At the age of 13, what happens? All of us were at that age, those who are beyond now. We were all at that age. What used to happen? Small pimple on your face and you can't sleep. You can't sleep. Because you say, hey, how are they going to look at me? You are worried about zina, beautification. The girls, what happens? They worried about what type of dressing they have. It must be written at the back, some designer name. Astaghfirullah. That is what is happening, honestly. And Allah is describing it. We want the zina. S cell phone. Small children want cell phone. Daddy, I need a Samsung D3000. It doesn't exist, but when it comes... 
So, a lot of the children have better phones than their own parents. Let's be honest. What is that? That means we, we are suffering and we are striving day in, day out, not to make the tarbiyah of our children, but to let them have it as they wish. So the day they tell you, I'm not interested in salah, you won't have an answer, but you don't know that because you gave them everything else, today they also want not to read salah. May Allah grant us understanding. We need to do the tarbiyah of our children. Now don't go home and roll your sleeve and say, right, bring all the phones back. That's not what we are saying. But we need to understand, we need, it, it, it's a matter of using your intellect and your brain to slowly and surely inculcate good values and character in our own children. We are losing them. Wallahi, we are losing them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues. And before I get to the next one, I still need to speak a little bit about the zina, this beautification. We ourselves, sometimes we are like kids and children. We know we can't afford something. We want to boast off with it. We know. And we allow our children to go to school and madrasa and other places and they must show the others that we are in a, on a higher off level than everyone else. They must show the others. Where did it come from? We don't even realize. Let me inform you. Allah says, لَا يَكُونَ بَيْنَ الْأَغْنِيَاءِ مِنْكُمْ Speaking of wealth, Allah says, the reasons why Allah has set rulings in Islam about wealth is because He does not want wealth to remain in the hands of only a certain group of the rich. No. The rich will become poor, the poor will become rich and vice versa and so on. How many of us who are seated here, we can afford things that our parents could not afford? And how many of us are seated here, we cannot afford things that our parents could afford? Allahu Akbar, tilka al-ayyamun dawiluha bayna nas Allah says the days, we will rotate them around for the people. You taste... This, they will taste that. You taste that, they will taste this. And so on, it will carry on. Don't think it's going to remain. It's a test, it carries on. It's a test, it carries on. If you have wealth, it's a test. If you don't have wealth, it's even a bigger test. كَادَ الْفَقْرُ أَنْ يَكُونَ kufra. At times, if we are on a level of poverty that we begin to question the authority of Allah, why did Allah keep me poor? We are now losing our iman gradually. And if it leads us to haram, we will be losing our iman gradually. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us steadfast. May He make us content. Live on your level. Al-iqtisadu fi nafaqati nisfu al-ma'isha. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to economize and budget, to strike a balance between your income and expenditure is half of your happiness in livelihood. Don't live on tick. Don't live on credit. Don't, don't go to the banks and start big, taking big, big credits, even if it means to buy a home. Why? Live in rented property. It's better for your iman. Yes, if it is halal and permissible within certain limits, you should understand. Alhamdulillah. But if you are enslaving yourself for 30 years, that will be your aim in life. My aim is to pay back 10,000 rands a month for the next 30 years. Will you ever go beyond that? No. 30 years, you might die, you might not manage for a few months, they'll take it away 25 years later. It's possible. So what did you live for? Nothing. Rather you wait, aim higher than that. Ya Allah, open the sustenance so that in 10 years time I can afford a house, one time lump sum. That's better. I am not stopping you from going to that which complies with the sharia. But I am encouraging you on what is known as taqwa, that which is even higher. Leave it. What do you want it for? The same applies to our motor vehicles and all the other things. What happens to us? We run to the bank. Run to the bank for what? In order to enslave ourselves to this dunya, not to Allah. We become abdul dirham wa abdul dinar. We become the worshipper of the dirham and the dinar. And nowadays, dirham and dinar sounds very nice. If someone is born and we say, keep his name abdul dirham, they might think it's a good name because it sounds nice. I think today we've become abdul dollar. And what sounds worse than that is abdul rand. It sounds even worse. And it's a reality. This is what we've become. We don't realize what is the dunya around us. We live, even our smallest things, we, are, we haven't yet paid for them. Why? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us trade. The best trade is that which you've paid for immediately. And, and you work for your own sweat and you paid for it. And Allah will grant you barakah in it. Let's move further. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَفَاخُرٌ بَيْنَكُمْ that's the next portion of the verse. We've translated three portions. Let's move to the next one. 
Tafakhur means to compete with one another. Tafakhur, because of pride. Fakhar. You know, we use the word fakhar. What does fakhar mean? You want to show off. You are proud. You want to prove that you are better and higher. That is the next stage. So now you get to 2021. 20, what happens? You want to prove, no, I'm higher. I got bigger degrees, bigger qualifications. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has never ever connected education to wealth. Never. The two are not connected in the least. Whoever thinks they are connected, they are fools. The richest people are those who don't have anything besides primary education. To be honest with you. Allah gives them more at times. Sometimes you have, I have a friend who's a doctor. He worked for several years. Then he shifted, he quit, he went into business. I told him why. He said, I want to earn a lump sum and I want to give up and I want to engage in the da'wah of Islam. And if I'm a doctor, I'll work my whole life and I still won't be happy. And I'm looking, I'm saying, when I was young, doctors were the lamis. Doctors were the richest of people. May Allah grant our doctors healthy lives here. We are not cursing you by any way. We need you in the community, inshallah. But Allah grant you barakah. Be content with what you have. Be happy with your situation. Be happy with your economic level. Be happy with the step that Allah has decided to put you on. Yes, if by his fadl and virtue he decides to push you further up, that is the gift of Allah, he gives whomsoever he wishes. But if Allah has decided to keep you there, so what? Alhamdulillah, be happy, be content. Buy food according to your level and standard. We don't have to go out to eat every week if we can't afford it. Even if we can afford it, we will not go. It's an insult. Some people regard it as an insult to go out and eat. Some do. They say, what do you mean? You're taking me out to eat. Don't you have a house? Don't you have a kitchen? Where are you taking me out to eat? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. That's another level on its own. If we have to say that in our homes, I wonder what would happen. Uh, go to your wife and tell her. In fact, some of the women must be listening to me right now. If we were to tell you it's an insult to go out and eat, let's say we don't know which insult you're talking about. We don't mind being insulted every week. That's what they will tell you. So Allah says there is competition. What type of competition? All this dunya competition. Dunya competition. People are competing about the dunya. Then what happens? You get married. After that, what happens? You get married. When you get married, what happens? You grow old. The competition is still on. I've got a better wife. Oh, mashallah, I've got this. She looks prettier. She's this, she's that. Allahu Akbar. May Allah save us. Yes, in Islam, we are meant to concentrate on the deen and on the character and akhlaq. That doesn't mean you must now look for the ugliest girl on the street. No. Beauty... You need to look at, but you do not base your decision on it. That's what Islam teaches us. If it is there, it is there. You will get it for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Then it has to fade. It has to fade. And the, the Quran in the same verse talks about that a little bit later. It has to fade. There's nothing that doesn't fade. So if you base your decision on that, your marriage will last for as long as the beauty is there. The minute it's gone, it's out. People get sick. I have had so many problems of people one year down the line, they say, I'm fed up. But what did you see in her? She was very beautiful in my eyes. Now she's no more. Why? I can't even mention the answer here. May Allah save us. Because we had the wrong reasons when we married. Our youngsters, our daughters and sons, they don't know why they are getting married. When you are marrying, you are looking for the mother of your children and the father of your children. Someone whom you can say, this lady is going to look after my children well. That is the woman, don't leave her. Marry her and respect her. When you are not there, she'll look after your kids. That's the lady. The young girls who are getting married, you don't look for the next most handsome man, a person who's driving a beamer and so on. No. We are looking for someone who can be the father of our children. Someone who can give the correct tarbiyah and akhlaq to our children. Even if he's not there most of the day, we'll do the looking after. But whenever he's there, he adds on to that. He can be a shining example, a role model. Recently I was in Pretoria, attending the AMS conference. One of our speakers, a top scholar from India, may Allah grant him a long and healthy life. He asked a question. He said, how many of you, and most of them were educators, which means teachers, how many of you, your role model is a parent or a teacher? 10%. Only 10%. Everyone, role model is someone else. And he, the essence of what he was saying, when someone's role model is a parent and a teacher, or a person 
whose parent is his own teacher, they are the most successful people in community and society. Because your whole day flows in a certain way. What is that way? Let's go back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. How was education? Did they have a school where they have five subjects, different teachers teach you one subject, one hour, and five teachers teach you for one hour a day. And then they carry on, they worried about their salary, half the time they're striking. Is that how it was? No. When they wanted to do tarbiyah, they sent you with one person. You had to be in his company for ten years. You came back as an alim. One person. That was the asal method. So if your role model is in your own house, you're living with him all your life. Finished. He will do your islah and everything at the same time. He will educate you and grant you that wisdom that Allah has granted him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all parents who are role models. And may Allah make us as parents role models. And may Allah make our children when they become parents role models. There is no role model. It's a gap. So they look for someone on the street. They look for elsewhere. When they turn on the television, what happens? They see Ronaldo kicking the ball. So Ronaldo is the role model. So everyone shaves their head. You think, mashallah, umre ke liye gaye the. They say, nay, nay, bay. They don't even understand what you are saying. May Allah save us. This is the halat of this dunya. And I'm being honest with you. I'm not mincing my words today. So Allah says, there comes a time when we compete with one another. Then I told you we get married. Even in marriage we compete. What type of competition? I had a bigger marriage. Oh no man, I'm a rich businessman. Those people invited me to their wedding. I got to invite all those who invited me to my daughter's wedding. Why? Send them a khankhotri. Send them a, 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 one of these, uh, these uh, invites. Tell them, listen, my daughter is getting married. The nikah will be at this masjid. Please make dua. Break the trend. Who told you they must come to your house to eat? Who said that? Happiness of your daughter is not connected to how many people come to eat and not. Let them come to the masjid where the nikah is taking place. They are engaging in a great act of worship. They can go away with one date, khajur. One. And they also, you don't have to distribute Ferrero Rochers and all that. One date. A, a life is simple. We make it difficult on the women folk. And sometimes the women folk make it difficult on us. I have to say that because we've got women listening somehow. So we can invite them an invitation to say, and don't even not invite them, print a million cards. In fact, some ulama will dispute to say even that card is not sunnah. Phone them. And if you really want to write it, never mind, write it. We'll go, we'll go that far. And tell them, so and so is getting married to so and so. You can even write their name, Mr. So and so, we request your personal duas. Jazakumullahu khaira. Send the card. They will say, but this is a different card. They might phone you. So where do we come? They say, you come to the masjid. Allahu Akbar. We need to do that. Why? Today it's become a, a point of fakhr. We are making life tough for the others. A man is rich. It doesn't mean he must have a huge wedding and invite the, re the rest of the dunya. The greatest barakah is in that nikah wherein the least of these unnecessary costs were made and expenses. We want barakah. Let people make dua for barakah. Allah will give it to us. Do not compete when it comes to marriages. Don't. Even if you are the most loaded person around, what you rather do, look for an orphanage around. And walima, tell them, listen, the walima is done at that orphanage. The wali what will you do? You will be encouraging those who do not know that this can also be done. And at the same time, you will be feeding people who genuinely will make dua. What happens at weddings today? Let me take you through it. We know, but I need to repeat it to, to bring reality in front of us. You go, you eat. What do you say? The chows was nice. Some say the doll was burnt. Right or wrong? Let's be honest. So what has it boiled down to? Food. Nothing else. How many of us have went to a nikah? We come back and raise our hands. Ya Allah, grant barakah to them. Ya Allah, we ask you to grant them happiness. Ya Allah, grant them a pious offering. Imam Sab makes dua. Whilst Imam is making dua, we're busy on our cell phones. Hey, this man is making a dua. We're just waiting now. We're waiting for the chows. These people are late. You know, it's already 2 o'clock. I might leave before the chows. But anyway, there's free chows here. We'll chow. That's exactly what is happening. <laughs> so, is this an ibadah? Walima is such a big ibadah. We've boiled it down to just food. We eat, we go, we comment about the chows alone. Nothing else. I've heard certain people commenting about how beautiful the music was. Astaghfirullah, Rabbi, min kulli wa natubu ilayh. 
Haram things are happening. So rather than opening the door for haram to happen, close the door, tell them, come to the masjid, and that is it. And if you really want, obviously, Walima, you call in your friends, call in five, six people at home. Like how we normally have a little dawah. You know, call the five, six people in and tell them, mashallah, my daughter is married and we are inviting uh, only my brothers and maybe a few people. Just to, to engage in that walima of happiness. My own immediate family. But I'm scared to say that because sometimes now people feel bad. Hey, they left me out. They left me out. I'm so closely related to them. Allah cursed them. It's happening. People have come to me with this type of a problem. So what is this? Tafakhur. This is competition. That's what the dunya is all about. This is the dunya. That marriage is not connected to how many people, or should I say the happiness of the marriage is never connected to how many people visited, or how much money was there, or how many presents came in, and so on and so forth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant our young boys and girls happiness. Those who are not married, may Allah grant them spouses who will be the coolness of their eyes. Those who are married and they have marital problems, make that marriage work by hook or crook. Inshallah. May Allah grant them the ability to solve their crises. And at times we make it difficult for our own children to get married. For our own brothers and sisters to get married. Because why? We have rules in our minds that are not in Quran and Hadith. They are not taught by Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say this person here, they come in India, two meters away from where we come, you can't marry them. Finish it. That's one. But today it's worse. This person, I have had a problem with them in my business, so you can't marry the daughter. No ways. If you marry her, get out of my house. What are we doing? How long are you going to last for? You're going to last for another 10 years, 15, 20. On your deathbed, you now start... Taking account of your deeds. What did you do in your life? I need to ask myself now. Pretend every one of you brothers and sisters now, tonight when we go home, pretend like you are in Sakarat. Wallahi, it's very healthy. It's part of muraqaba and muhasaba. Pretend like you are in Sakarat. And think to yourself, imagine I'm going now. What have I achieved in my life? Don't think about your salah and zakah that you read here. That salah and zakah everyone has read and given. Even that, you will be surprised how we have let down our own creator by not fulfilling the wajibat and farai. But think to yourself, how many people's life have I made difficult? Will they ever forgive me? My children, what have I done for them? My wife, my husband, what have I done for them? Have I ever even gone up to say, Jazakumullahu khaira, you are my husband or my wife and I, you have done so much for me, I, I have to appreciate. I have to appreciate. And from this day on, I want to lead a happy life. Let's ask ourselves how many people's lives we made difficult. How many tariqahs we followed which are not the sahih tariqah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How many? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَكَاثُرُونَ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ After that, what happens? You begin to collect wealth. You begin to collect wealth. And collect what else? Children. Takathurun fil amwal, which means to gather and multiply your wealth. For what purpose? To boast. This man has a million. This man is worth 40 million rands. Believe me, in the eyes of Allah, he is not even worth. Can I tell you what? He is not even worth the wing of a fly. It is mentioned in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu These things mean absolutely nothing. In fact, it is a weight and a responsibility on his shoulders. Do you know, it's very simple to understand the one who has much more, has many more questions to answer. SARS does not come to the pauper on the street. SARS goes to the big, big people who have big, big businesses to find out where did you get it, how did you spend it, how much did you give us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his example is higher than any other example. A person who passes away is going to be asked one of the prime questions. Where did you get what you got? How did you get it? Where did you spend it and why? And how did you fulfill your duties? Monetary duties. So if you have passed through 15 billion rands in your life, believe me, you're going to be there for a long time. 
We bring in 300 US dollars worth from Saudi Arabia. When you come in Johannesburg, you know how the red route feels. Only $300, $500, you know how it feels. And they rush you, pay duty, come on. You're wearing this jewelry, you're wearing it. Okay, take it out, this is excess, too much. We know how we wear it, alhamdulillah. We are not saying it's right or wrong. I don't want to discuss the laws of this land. But I want to tell you, let's prepare for something that's definitely coming. There you can get away. In the akhirah you can't. So Allah says, Takatharun fil amwal. Gathering wealth. What do we do today? Typical example, a man works from six to six. He doesn't see his children because they are sleeping when he leaves and they are sleeping when he arrives. Weekend, he spends one, two hours for fun with his children. And he works like that for 30 years. And sometimes he dies 25 years down the line. And sometimes he, up to the point of death, he works like that. What did he achieve in his life? Did he have any quality time with his own family members? Why did he marry in the first place? Who brought up his children? At times, husband and wife are both out. The maid brings up the children. I want to give you an example which we can cry about. Go to Makkah to Al-Mukarramah in Saudi Arabia. A lot of the children speak the Filipino language and Indonesian language. A lot of them. One would wonder why. Because mother is not there, father is not there. Who brings up the children? The maid who comes from Indonesia and Philippines. Wallahi, it's a fact. It's a sickness. It's a disease. Their qualities will brush off onto our children. But I think I am wrong to give you an example very far. For what is happening in our own midst. You know who is bringing up the children? Other children just like that child. So what was the point of a father? What was the point of the mother? I always tell people, yes, for the first 5-10 years of your life, you can work 6 to 6. After 5 years, cut it. 7 to 5. After another 5 years, 8 to 4. After another 5 years, 9 to 3 and leave it at that. Those 6 hours that you deducted are worth more than 10,000 rands a day. A day. If you spend them with your wife and children. And vice versa. If a wife spends them with her husband and children. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Why? You are going to amass this wealth. But in the process, a lot of people who have a lot of wealth do not have much happiness in the house. They do not have much contentment. This is not a rule. There are exceptions to it. There are definitely exceptions. But I am talking generally, a lot of the people are like this. They cannot sleep at night unless they have tablets. Believe me. So what happened? What did we achieve by this? This is the dunya. It is a deception. It is going to leave us one day. And I want to give you another example. If we realize what is the dunya, we are running around every day. Every day I run from here to there, I go here, I earn this, I make this deal, I deceive this man, I do this to that man, I cheat this guy, I make a deal, I find that I've agreed with this man, but someone is offering me five cents more, so I, I cancel this deal and I go there without any reason here, so I've cheated somebody, I go there and I have a heart attack and I die. Everything I was ever running for, what's going to happen to it? It's gone. It's history. It's finished. Nobody will see it. The only thing that goes with you in your grave is how straightforward you were. Nothing else. Nothing else. So have we ever thought of this? People are not going to bury you with your wealth. No, never. They used to say the Chinese did it. I ask the Chinese now because we know they are all over. They say, you're mad. We're more interested in money than anyone else. And I think we can confirm that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turn them also to Islam. And the Muslimin from amongst them, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them steadfast. So, this is what it is. وَتَفَاخُرٌ بَيْنَكُمْ وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ Now you are 60 years old, 65, 70. What are you proud of? How much money you've amassed and how successful your children are. Someone says at the age of 50, 60, remember, I'm not despising anyone. We are mentioning what is in the Quran. And I'm just saying, I hope it doesn't fit on anyone. But at times, normally what the Qur'an says has to fit on a lot of people. Because the Qur'an is the word of Allah, my creator and yours. You now arrive at an old age, people say, how many children you have? Oh, I got a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant. When we are young, someone says, how many children you got? You say, two daughters and a son. Because you know that I can't say doctor and lawyer. But as you grow old, you say, oh, I got a doctor, lawyer, I got an uh, accountant. Mechanic and this, in fact, mechanic, we won't really say it very fast. He, he's the last person on the list. It's a fact of life. It's a fact of life. Who are we fooling here? Who are we fooling? 
Those people come with their own rosy, their own book, their hisab kitab is not on you, it's on themselves. We cannot afford to even for a minute think that those children will help us in the akhirah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it in the Quran. Ya ayyuhan nas, O people, ittaqu rabbakum, be conscious of your creator, your rabb. وَاخْشَوْ يَوْمًا لَا يَجْزِي وَالِدٌ عَنْ وَلَدِهِ And be conscious and fear the day when even a father will not be able to assist his child, a child will not be able to assist his father. Everyone has their own nafsi nafsi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us peace on that day. So, this is what it is. We now speak about our children and how successful they are and so on. What success do we speak about? The vast majority speak about the success of the dunya. But some people are proud about success of the of deen also. And what did I say? When we are granted deeny success, a sign of acceptance is that we don't become proud about that. That's a sign of acceptance. It doesn't blow our head now five centimeters and we start standing as though there is a stamp behind us saying Jannah on our backs. So everyone else is Jahannam. That's not how it is. But some people operate in that way. May Allah save me and you and all of us. So we say, my son, oh mashallah, you know, alhamdulillah, he's got a big beard and he does this and that. Oh, we don't need to know about that. That between him and Allah. We can answer alhamdulillah. We must be humble in our answers, inshallah. So Allah says, وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ Now He gives you the example. كَمَثَلِ غَيْثٍ أَعْجَبَ الْكُفَّارَ نَبَاتُهُ ثُمَّ يَهِيجُ فَتَرَاهُ مُصْفَرًّا ثُمَّ يَكُونُ حُطَامًا Allah says, what is this example? Everything goes round in a circle. You start off in weakness, you are a child, you go up, you bloom and blossom, and then you come old and wilt again, and then you die, and it's, everything is over. Allah says, just like a farmer, when he sees rain, the results of the rain is that the crop begins to grow. He's happy. He sees the crop growing nice and green, suddenly it wilts, it becomes yellow, and then it dies. You leave the crop without reaping, without harvesting, what happens to the crop? It will die. When it dies, you won't benefit from it. So Allah says that is life. Life is just like this. It's a span. Think of it. How many people, their great grandparents are still alive? How many? Where were they? Were they not born one day? Were they not youngsters who went to school one day? Were they not people who grew up? Where did they go? They went somewhere. What helped them? Do you even know how much they had? Most of us don't even know what they had. Some of us don't even know their names. So to, uh, when we die in a hundred years time, only a hundred, not long, hundred years time, people won't even know who we were at times. The way the dunya is carrying on, they won't want to know also. They will not want to know. So should we work for them or for ourselves? That's the question. Work for ourselves. And what work should we work? Be happy with a little bit you have. Once you can afford life and so on, make sure that you have also spent time, develop your character, develop your conduct, remove all the evils from your heart. Hasad, which is jealousy, cheating, backbiting, deception. These are the issues that all the ulama speak of and develop a link with the ulama. Without a link with the ulama, you have no hope of getting close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because al-ulama warathatul anbiya. Those who know deen, they are the ones who can help you to tell you how to get close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sunnah. Those who know the deen. And if you get close to his sunnah, you can get closeness to Allah. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ He says, if you love Allah, if you say you love Allah, follow my example and you, Allah will love you also in return. You will get closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah gives us this example of the crop. It makes the farmers happy. And then suddenly it wilts. Then what does Allah say after that? Amazing. Allah says, وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ شَدِيدٌ وَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانٌ وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُونَ Allah says, if you come into the akhirah, there's one of two ways. There is either severe punishment or there is forgiveness. May Allah forgive us. 
When you get into the akhirah, when you are dying, imagine, think about it, those who've been committing zina, those who are still committing zina, those who are eating infants, those who are doing haram, think about it, you are now on your deathbed, and you start thinking, oh, I committed zina with so many people, was it worth it? Can it ever have been worth it? Let's be honest. It's a ladha for a few minutes, for a short period of time. What happens? It is a curse for the rest of our lives. We need to engage in tawbah. We all have our weaknesses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us and protect us. Eating haram. We eat interest for 20 years. Now you are in sakarat. What's going to help you? You will think I wasted my time. I could have done without it. It's too late. It's too late. So we need to turn now. That's why ulama after ulama come to us. Come to our communities. Come to our people. To remind us all. Men and women. And children and adults. To say turn to Allah before it is too late. That is all. That is the message. My message today, what is it? Turn to Allah before it is too late. That's all. We all have our own peculiar ways and habits. That is why we like different ulama to come to us. Same alim speaks to you more than ten times, you get sick of him. You start complaining about him. You start whinging and whining about him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. May we develop a link with the ulama in our midst. We need to respect the ulama in our midst. Even if they have one or two weaknesses, they are not ambiya. If they didn't have weaknesses, they would be ambiya. And this is what will drive us, inshallah, in the right direction. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ This life in the dunya is only a deception. It, it is full. In fact, it is provisions of deception. Today you have, mashallah, there is going to be a shortage of rice, shortage of fuel, shortage of this. What do you do? You stock up, not realizing that you are going to die in 10 days' time. Who knows that you are going to die in 10 days' time? Only Allah. So you've stocked up, all that stock was a stock of deception for you. They might have fought after you as to who must get that. So if had you not bought that, maybe there wasn't going to be a fight. Children roll up their sleeves and they go and beat each other. Who must get daddy's estate here? Me or you? You, you were not in the business. You went out. Wallahi, whether you were in the business or not, a share is a share. Take it or leave it. Meaning, you have to understand it. Yes, that is why we need to stipulate from now what is happening. We are not allowed to prohibit one son just because we didn't like who he married. We can't do that. The ulama will explain that to you. Go to the ulama, talk to them, tell them, look, I need to draw up a will here, man. Anyone who is the, in the age of maturity and owns any property must have a will. How many of us have a will here? It shows we are all living in the, in the, in the doka of the dunya. We don't realize we might die in the next minute what's going to happen to everyone else. Yes, Allah will take care of them, but people might fight because we left ends loose and we left the dunya. Everything needs to be put down. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so now what should we do? Someone might ask, this is a, the dunya is a deception, we've understood it. I'm not saying divorce yourselves from the dunya, no. We need to live. I didn't say give up work totally. I said work, but from 9 to 3. Didn't I say that? And initially you work more hours. So I said work, but understand your limits. Prioritize. Know what you want. Think carefully. Don't just think material, material, material. That, that is what the kuffar are doing today. Every decision of theirs is based on money, money, and more money. That's all. Every single decision is based on money. How many of us, our decisions are based on money? A lot. The Muslims, many Muslims now, they have become more westernized, so-called modernized. They call themselves civilized because their decisions are also based on money. When the Dajjal comes, he will offer you deen or money. If you take this deen, he will kill you. If you take money, he will say you are right, you are okay. How many of us, our decisions are based on money? Think of it. We must understand. We need to have a big heart so that we can prepare our children to face the Dajjal. May Allah make our offspring from the army with Isa alayhi salam who's going to fight the Dajjal. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so what, what should you do? The next verse, Allah says, سَابِقُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا كَعَرْضِ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Compete. When it comes to what? Maghfira. Mercy. Forgiveness. Then you must compete. Compete with the good deeds. Don't compete with this dunya that is there. This is what is going to help you now. 
If you compete in tawbah, in istighfar, every day, you compete in your good deeds, you are a good person, you are an asset to society, you speak nicely, you smile with the people, you don't deceive, you don't cheat, you are not jealous of people, you are a person who makes life easy for others, inshallah, you are heading in the right direction. When you die, that will come with you in the grave. Your good deeds will bear witness for you on the day of qiyamah. They will come and they will literally intercede on your behalf and mine. May Allah grant us the intercession of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Your good deeds. And your bad deeds can come as a curse. Al-Quran hujjatu laka aw alayk. We've heard that so many times. Quran will come and it will either be approved for you or against you. We have heard the verses today. These verses will come. And they will either be approved for us or against us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell us, these verses came to you, they were read to you. What did you do about them in return? Did you even put a scarf on your head in the case of the females? Even a scarf on the head, sometimes it's too difficult for us. Why? We might die. And who knows if Allah intends mercy, the minute we decide to put it, next day we have a heart attack and we're gone. Where are we heading? Inshallah in the right direction. That is the maghfirah of Allah. I know people whom... They might have led their lives in a very wrong way. Then they decided we are making tawbah. They went for hajj. They never ever came back. They died there in Mina. Allah granted them that rank of martyrdom. So Allah says, Sabiku ila mafiratim min rabbikum. Compete for the forgiveness of your Rabb and compete for Jannah. How do you earn Jannah? Jannah is a commodity that you have to pay for. How do you pay for it? Every day you have five installments. Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. You pay five installments. So if you missed out one, something is wrong. And if you have not paid it, there is a house there that you are not paying for. You will end up in another house. That house will have no lights, no water. You might be on the streets. You've never paid for it. So we need to pay for Jannah. Something haram is to be done. When you abstain from it, you're making a payment for Jannah. Ya Allah, I really, really felt like committing the sin, but I will not do it because I want Jannah in return, Ya Allah. Now you are heading in the right direction. And I want your forgiveness, Ya Allah. Make me strong, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, I felt like causing this big problem with my husband or my wife or so on, but I won't do it for your sake. You, you are the one who taught us the best from amongst you is the one who is best to his or her spouse. I want to be the best and I want Jannah in return, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, I will live under these conditions which are difficult, but in return I want mercy from you, Ya Allah. This is what we need. So that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Wajannah, and Allah described it, Arduha ka'ardi sama'i wal ardi u'iddat lilladheena amanu billahi wa rusulih. Thalika fadlullahi yu'tihi man yasha. Allah says it is such a broad garden that we will be given, broader than even the earth and the sky is put together. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant each one of us Jannah, the gardens. And Allah says it has been prepared for those who believe and who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the gift of Allah. That is what we are supposed to be struggling for. And I want to end on one note. That note is, look, we all have to go. I don't want to doom everyone to say, hey, listen, you're dying. You're dying. No, I don't want to put it in that way. But let's prepare for the day we are going. No one knows when we're going. Come on, it's, it's not the right time now. أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ Has the time not come? Has the time not come for the believers to turn to Allah? To adopt what Allah has revealed? To adopt the correct methods? How long are we going to carry on in our sins for? These sins, how long do they help us for? Five minutes? Ten minutes? One year? Five years? Chalo, ten years? Then? Then where do you go? Think of it. So Allah is saying, look, think of this dunya, where it is and what is happening, and think of how many people have left it, and think to yourself, am I going to be the exception? You are not an exception. You are also going in the same way. So make friends with Allah. Make friends with Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us Jannah, inshallah. Today I tried to describe the dunya so that we know it is just a deception. Everyone moves around the circle. Everyone thinks. You know when you see an old man about to die, old man sick in hospital, think to yourself in a few years time I might be like that. Then try and sin, let's see. If you, are, if you don't have iman, you'll end up sinning. But if you have iman, just by seeing the people older than you, you will realize that hey, I'm going there, this, this sin is not going to help me. I deceived this man of five rands, let me take a knock, but Allah will give me Jannah in return. 
Let me suffer a little loss, but I'm honest, I'm straightforward. That honesty will come on the, on the right side of the scale, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make easy for us the difficulties. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdi. Kana shahadu an la ilaha illa anta nastawfirka wa natubu ilayk. Allahumma salli wa sallim daiman abadan ala habibika khayri al-khalqi kullihimi. Ya Allah, forgive our sins, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we are so sinful. We've committed so many sins, Ya Allah, forgive us. Ya Allah, there are sins we've committed which we cannot remember, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, there are sins we've committed which we don't even know were sins, Ya Allah. Forgive us for all that, Ya Allah. That which we know, that which we don't know. All that you know, Ya Allah, forgive us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we are pleading, pleading for your mercy, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, forgive us. Make us, purify us, Ya Allah. Make us the best of people, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, purify us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, save us from petty dispute, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make us happy in our homes, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make us from amongst those who can be the true followers of Muhammad, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, make a, create a barrier between us and shaitan, Ya Allah. Keep shaitan away from us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, don't allow him to turn us away, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us recognize you, Ya Allah. Help us find you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us love you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us love you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to love us as well, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, guide us in every move we make, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we need you more than we need anything else, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we need you more than we need food and drink and air, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we need you, Ya Allah. The day you take us away, Ya Allah, take us away with a smile, Ya Allah. Take us away with a kalima, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us Jannah in the Akhirah, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us intercession of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant us the companionship of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Akhirah, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, all those who are ill, cure them, Ya Allah. All those who are sick, Ya Allah, cure them, Ya Allah. Grant them shifa kamil ajil, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, those who have passed away into your mercy, Ya Allah, have mercy on them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, grant them maghfirah, Ya Allah. Grant them forgiveness, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, resurrect us all on the day of Qiyamah with the Muslimin, Ya Allah. With the Anbiya, alayhi wa salatu wa salam, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you on this day that all those who are looking after those who are sick, Ya Allah, grant them a full reward of looking for looking after those who are sick, Ya Allah. Those who visit the ill, Ya Allah, grant them the reward and make us from amongst those who can go and visit the ill, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, those who help solve problems, Ya Allah, have mercy on them and grant them upliftment, Ya Allah. Those who have marital problems, help them solve their problems, Ya Allah. Those who do not, ha- who, who do not have offspring, Ya Allah, grant them offspring, Ya Allah. And those who do have offspring, make, them the, make their offspring the coolness of their eyes, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you all the goodness Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has asked you. And we seek protection from all the evil he has sought protection from. Anta al-musta'an alayka al-balaghu wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-alil al-azim. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa sallam.